Hey guys, uh, just like last week, I'm going to read to you from one of the resources from the card. Um, this one is from the 100 Most Important Events in Christian History. Uh, also, just like last week, if you watch the video, I'd really like if you leave in the comments um, something interesting that you learned. You guys did a great job with that. I really appreciated seeing uh, what you had to say. So please do that again this week if you, if you watch this one, okay? As soon as the coin in the coffer rings, the soul from pur purgatory springs. So went the jingle of Johann Tetzel, the man authorized to raise money to build a new basilica in Rome. His, fun his fundraising gimmick, the sale of indulgences, was quite simply selling forgiveness. He would, uh, they were raising money to build a new basilica in Rome. The way they were doing that, they were um, selling these indulgences, which they claimed would um, basically buy people's forgiveness and buy time out of purgatory uh, for them, which is totally, totally unbiblical. Purgatory is unbiblical, and being able to buy forgiveness goes t completely against what the Bible says about forgiveness. Um, continuing. Get your dear departed loved ones out of purgatory for a fee and earn credit against your own sins. The church was rife with corruption. Church offices were bought by wealthy nobles and used to gain more wealth and power. One such noble was Albert of Brandenburg, who borrowed money to buy himself the archbishopric of Mainz and needed a way to pay back the loan. The Pope authorized the sale of indulgences in Albert's region, as long as half the money collected funded the construction of St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. The rest went to Albert. Everyone was happy, except for a number of devout Germans, among them Martin Luther. Tetzel, a Dominican monk and a popular preacher, became commissioner of indulgences. He traveled from town to town, hawking their benefits. Listen to the voices of your dear dead relatives and friends, beseeching you and saying, pity us, pity us. We are in dire torment from which you can redeem us for a pittance. Do you not wish to? Luther, a priest and professor at Wittenberg, strongly opposed the sale of indulgences. When Tetzel came around, Luther wrote up a list of 95 grievances and tacked them to the church door, which served as sort of a community bulletin board. Divine forgiveness certainly could not be bought or sold, Luther said, when God offers it freely. So Luther completely disagreed with this idea of buying forgiveness because people were claiming that you could actually buy forgiveness for loved ones as well. And he, uh, Tetzel was using that saying, we're, we're in pain, have pity on us. We're miserable, give them money so that we can get out of purgatory. And Martin Luther said, no, that's wrong. And he used the door of the church. It was kind of like a, a bulletin board and he used it to bring attention to these matters. He didn't expect it to become this huge thing. He really just expected the people around to see it, the people um, at the church. Indulgences, however, were just the tip of the iceberg. Luther railed against the entire corruption of the church and pressed for a new understanding of papal and scriptural authority. Tetzel was soon out of the picture. He died in 1519. But Luther went on to lead a religious revolution that radically changed the Western world. Luther was born in 1483 to a peasant couple in Eiselben, Germany. His father, a miner, pushed him toward the study of law, sending him to the University of Erfurt. But a narrow escape from death by lightning made young Luther change course. He entered an, an Augustinian monastery in 1505 becoming a priest in 1507. His superiors, recognizing his academic abilities, sent him to Wittenberg University to earn a degree in theology. The spiritual restlessness that harassed other great Christians through the ages fell upon Luther as well. He was deeply aware of his own sin, 
of God's holiness and of his utter inability to earn God's favor. In 1510, he journeyed to Rome and was disillusioned by the kind of mechanical faith he found there. He did everything he could to be truly pious. He even climbed Pilate's stairs where Christ supposedly walked. Luther prayed and kissed each step as he went, but even then the doubts were brewing. So he was trying to work, to do things, to feel, uh, to feel better about his sin. But we can't work our way to forgiveness, and he started to recognize that. In a few years, he was back at Wittenberg as a doctor of theology, teaching courses on the Bible. In 1515, he began teaching on Paul's epistle to the Romans. Paul's words gnawed at Luther's soul. My situation was that, although an impeccable monk, I stood before God as a sinner, troubled in conscience, and I had no confidence that my merit would, ass would assuage him, wrote Luther. Night and day I pondered until I saw the connection between the justice of God and the statement, the just shall live by his faith. Then I grasped that the justice of God is that righteousness by which through grace and sheer mercy God justifies us through faith. Thereupon I felt myself to be reborn and to have gone through open doors into paradise. The whole of scripture took on a new meaning. The, this passage of Paul became to me a gate to heaven. Then, more confident of his own beliefs and with some support from colleagues, Luther was free to speak out against corruption. He had criticized indulgences, selling and the worship of relics even before Tetzel came along. Tetzel merely brought the conflict to a head. Luther's 95 theses were amazingly restrained considering the upheaval they caused. They were really merely an invitation to debate. He got debate, first from Tetzel, later from the renowned scholar Johann Eck, who charged Luther with heresy. It seems that, at first, Luther expected the Pope to agree with him about the indulgence abuse, but as the controversy continued, Luther solidified his own opposition to the papacy. In 1520, the Pope issued a bull, or decree, condemning Luther's views, and Luther burned it. In 1521, the Diet, or Council, or Assembly of Varms, ordered Luther to retract his published views. There, as legend has it, Luther stated, Here I stand. I can do no other. God help me. Amen. Thereafter, Luther was excommunicated, his writings banned. For his own protection, he was kidnapped by his patron, Frederick the Wise, and hidden in Wartburg Castle. There he worked on further theological writings and a translation of the New Testament into popular German. But the battle was just beginning. By daring to oppose the Pope, Luther had set off feelings of independence in German nobles and peasants alike. Germany became a patchwork quilt as certain nobles came out in support of Luther and others remained loyal to Rome. Reformation was brewing in Switzerland as well, led by Ulrich Zwingli. The church and the, Roman, the Holy Roman Empire were distracted by political struggles throughout the 1520s. By the time they got tough with the reformers, it was too late. A meeting at Augsburg, Augsburg in 1530 came close to bringing the Lutheran cause back under the Roman umbrella. Luther's colleague, Philip Mel Melanchthon, prepared a concili conciliatory statement of Lutheran views, presenting their position as being true to historic Catholicism. But the Catholic Council demanded concessions that Luther would not make, and the rift became final. In retrospect, it appears that the events of the Reformation owe a great deal to Luther's unique personality. Without his brooding self-doubt, he might never have mined the truths of scripture as he did. Without his zeal for righteousness, he might never have posted his protest. Without his boisterousness, he might never have attracted a sizable following. He lived in a time ripe for change, and he was ideally suited to bring it about. 
So again, if you would leave some comments if you've watched this, leave some comments about uh, something you found interesting.